part of the JavaScript lecture where we discuss more on variables and types in JavaScript. And earlier we said that JavaScript is untyped, but as I already mentioned back then, this is not quite true. It's instead weakly typed. It actually knows six different data types. So uh, you have the four primitive data types, which are numbers, strings, boolean, and the undefined type. And then you have only two complex types, one of which is function and the other one is object, which includes all sorts of things, also, for example, arrays. Um, and JavaScript has a, a function to check the type and that's the type of function. Um, so if we quickly look at that, uh, I again load my basic JavaScript example, which has a lot of different things by now. Um, And I just write a script <coughs> where I define different variables. So I, let's do a number one, uh, a floating point, a string, and nothing else. And finally, we have a Boolean. And if I simply lock the types, you can see. Uh, that this works as I just explained. So let's print all types y, z, uh, then we have f, and finally we have d. So let's open this function. just to show you what I've done here. Uh, so of course you don't see much, but in the console you see the different types. Um, and if I open my VS Code window next to it, you'll see that X is five, Y is 5.5. .5. Both of these are of type number. Uh, so it doesn't matter whether it's a floating point or an integer number. Uh, set is a string. F, I haven't given any value. That means it's undefined. Um, and D is a Boolean. So those are the four primitive types. Uh, and then if I would create an object, let's say we change D to an object, and we get a bit later to how that looks like. Um, but this is, for example, an object. Then the output would change to type of D is object. Now, I mentioned it already a little bit, but functions are variables in uh, JavaScript as well, and you should know that from Python. So you can define a function here, func a, that does whatever. Uh, you can call it with regular brackets, also the way you are used to do that. Um, but then you can assign a function to another variable. So here we assign function a to b, and then we can call b the same way as we called func a before, and we'll actually implicitly call uh, this function. And this is a call by reference, so b actually becomes a reference to function a. Again, <clears throat> this is something I can demonstrate. So let's write a simple function that logs something. Log string. Hello world. Uh, and I call the function like this, and then I can also assign it to a variable. Uh, and note that I don't have the brackets here, just the name of the function, and then I can call x in the same way. So now our output should be hello world twice. And you see that this is actually true. Here's the small two. Um, so it's being locked two times in a row. So this works the same way, and this is, uh, when we later get to the more advanced concept, this is used quite heavily in callbacks that you actually provide uh, pointers, references to a function, to another function, so that that function can call you back, uh, but more to that later. Now, JavaScript objects, I've just made a small example already. Um, this would be an example of an object in JavaScript. You basically define a variable with the keyword var again, uh, and then the special thing here are the curly braces. So you 
have curly braces to, to indicate that this is an object, uh, and then you add attributes simply by writing the attribute name and a value if you want to, uh, and comma separated, so you can have many of those. So essentially those are variables inside the object attributes. Um, and the access to that then works either by doing object.name or with square brackets and the attribute name in parentheses, uh, in quotation marks. So the first notation is pretty common in most programming languages, also in Python, I believe. Uh, and this is both read and write access, so you can also put uh, values in there. Uh, there are in ES5 and lower in JavaScript, there are no classes, but there's a so-called prototype system. Uh, in newer versions of JavaScript, I think from ES6, they introduced classes, which is essentially an, an abstraction on top of the prototype system. Uh, but we won't cover this in this course. Uh, this will be covered in the second web course where we go into more depth with JavaScript. Um, now, as you see up here in the example, object creation is really, really simple, uh, simply to yeah, I simply write this and I have a new object. Uh, and this is where the object, uh, the JavaScript object notation comes from, or JSON, which we'll cover on the next slides. Um, but I'll start by showing you uh, an example here again. <clears throat> I create an object, I again call it X. Um, and curly braces, as you see, and now I can just add different variables in here. I can say Y is five. Uh, v is something, test is true. Uh, so you see that here there's not the, the var keyword, but basically it's implicit because I create a new object here, it creates automatically the variables within this object. Uh, and now I can access these uh, values by simply saying x dot and then one of the three, for example, test, this should print out true. Uh, and the same way I can change things. So if I change the value to false, you'll notice that the output will first be true, then be false. Here you go. Uh, another thing which I have not quite mentioned yet uh, is that the type can change. So even though here test is of type boolean, uh, I can simply assign, for example, a string to it. Um, and then the type changes automatically. So if I instead of the value do type of x.test, you'll see that first the type of the variable is a boolean because true is the value uh, and then it changes to string. Uh, so this is another thing, another characteristic of this weakly typed JavaScript that types are implicit, I don't have to define them myself, but they can also change throughout the lifetime. So this was very quickly how to do objects. Now the JSON notation, the JavaScript object notation is basically a very common data exchange format. Uh, it's also very common nowadays for configuration files and so on to just list uh, the configuration in JSON. And basically it's the same as a JavaScript object. So if the object is the first line here, you remember I have object, I have different uh, attributes with values. Then the JSON is a string, first of all. So you have quotation mark, the end, uh, beginning and end, and then all the uh, attribute names and all the values are also enclosed in uh, quotation marks. So this is a JSON string, but you see that the difference is of course uh, very large here. It's basically the same format. Uh, and this is exactly where the name comes from. It's basically how JavaScript defines objects. Uh, so this is very common, and the great thing is that you don't really need to do this yourself, but uh, you basically have a lot of uh, methods that do that. So if you have an object, you just call json.stringify, you pass the object, and you get back the JSON string. Uh, and the other way around, if you have a JSON string, for example, you have done an HTTP request and the answer is coming in JSON, uh, then you can just do json.parse, put in the string, and you get an object back. Uh, and this is of course one of the reasons why JSON is so popular because it's incredibly easy to read and write JSON uh, in JavaScript. Maybe more as a side note, but JSON.stringify, so converting an object to a JSON string, removes functions. 
Uh, let's demonstrate JSON quickly as well. Um, I have my object here and I can just print my object and I can also say JSON X is JSON dot stringify X. So I put in my object, I get a JSON string back. Um, and let's see what happens. Uh, well, the first part you see that it it tells me, the browser tells me that this is an object. The object has a variable Y, V and test with the different values. Uh, in the second case, it just shows me a string. And this is exactly the, the JSON string. So quoted attributes, uh, the whole thing is a single uh, string and I don't get this uh, hint from the browser that this is an object because it's not an object anymore. So this is JSON. Uh, we'll get across this later again when we talk about the backend because as I said, it's extremely common to exchange data with JSON. As a last thing uh, in this small module here, we do JavaScript arrays. Um, arrays are similar as in most languages uh, using square brackets. So this example here is simply again var. It's a variable of type array that has three uh, three values, um, three strings in this example, and they can be accessed by the index, again, as in most other programming languages. Um, I said that this variable is of type array, that's of course wrong, because as I mentioned before, the type of an array is object. So even though this is an array, if I do type of cars, it will tell me object. Uh, one important thing is what does not exist in JavaScript is associative arrays. So you cannot access uh, elements in the array by uh, by passing a string into the square brackets. So many programming languages support that I put a string in here to identify a certain element. Uh, JavaScript does not, so you have to use the index. Um, if you put an array into JSON, uh, it basically looks the same way. You have variable name, colon, as with all other attributes, and then you just have the square brackets. So it's the same as if you would simply initialize it uh, as a JavaScript variable. Uh, and of course, you can have objects in arrays using the curly braces, you can have arrays in arrays, and so on. Let's quickly test this. Uh, five string uh, true. So you see, I put different types in here, also no problem. Uh, and let's log one of them. My array at position zero. Uh, and let's do a string concatenation and just add another element, for example, the second one to show you that the two different types are not an issue. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to demonstrate is that array is of type object. So you see that I can have different types in my array. Uh, I can access them using the index starting from zero and you see that array is of type object. Uh, the other thing that might be interesting is dynamically adding and removing elements. Um, which is quite complicated in some programming languages. In Java, it's really straightforward. So I can do my array.push and simply add a new variable. For example, new string. Um, and then I can, of course, print out this using my array three. So it's the fourth element, which has index three. Um, and you'll see that the new string has been added. Uh, similarly, you can uh, you can remove the last element from an array doing pop, um, which simply removes the last element and returns it. So in this case, I'm adding the new string, I'm printing it, and then I'm removing it again. Uh, so I'll get it in this return val. As you see here. One important thing is here, I simply access the elements using the index that's a bit dangerous. Usually you should always do a check first. So you should make sure that your array actually has the right size. And you can do that using the myarray.length parameter. So length gives you how many are there right now. Um, 
and this we can show here that uh, our push and pull works. So first it should give me three because there are three elements in here. Then I add a new one, it should give me four. I remove it again, it should give me three. So you see that this is happening here. Uh, so you should always make sure that whatever you can access uh, actually exists because of course I can do something like my array 10, uh, but this element does not exist. So I get undefined back. Okay, so those are arrays, um, and this concludes this small uh, module on JavaScript. And overall, we have now learned in the first eight parts of this j whole JavaScript module how to include JavaScript in HTML, the different ways, um, how to call and trigger JS code, so using HTML events, uh, using the parsing of the HTML document, so whenever the script becomes loaded by the browser, our JavaScript is executed. Um, I have discussed how to access the DOM, how to get elements, for example, a diff, how to change uh, elements, remove them, add new ones. And then we went into the basics of JavaScript, what, what kind of variables exist, what types exist, functions, objects, arrays now recently, and JSON. Um, and in the next couple of parts, we'll now dive into more the behavior of Java, how it works, uh, of JavaScript, what does not work as you would expect, and so on.